health insurance reform. What does it mean for you? Sponsored by Avera Health Plans. Good evening, I'm Paige Pearson. I'm Brian Allen. Preventative care that is a lot more accessible and more affordable for Americans. That is the goal behind the Affordable Care Act. Over the next half hour, our goal is to help you make sense of what's happening so you can make informed decisions about health care choices for you and your family. We'll talk about using the marketplace online, which can be overwhelming for some. But there are people here in our region to help you navigate the changes. There's a lot of information out there about health care these days, so we're going to help you sort through what's fact and what's fiction. Beginning with this, starting January 1, the new insurance plans of the Affordable Care Act go into effect, but open enrollment is already underway right now. Our Jake Iverson explains what you can expect. It's nice to be able to, you know, love what you do for a living. Nick Kersopoulos is his own boss. With a leap of faith, he started Woodworks by Nick. Yeah, I started out as a cabinet maker. But by leaving his previous employer, he's now on his own for health insurance. Evidently, there's going to be changes coming up effective in January, and I really have no idea what that could be. Is it going to be for the better or for the worse? I really don't know. What Nick is worried about is the Affordable Care Act and the changes it will bring to the health insurance world. My biggest question is, how it's, is it going to affect my policy? Is the price going to go up? Am I going to get any assistance, you know, to where it balances out and keeps my payment lower? Um, again, the copay issue, how, how is it going to affect that? Most people are like Nick and don't fully understand the insurance lingo or can't tell you the difference between a premium and a deductible. So how do you know what's best for you? Shopping for insurance is now a lot like shopping for an airline ticket. On the insurance marketplace of healthcare.gov, you'll be able to pick and choose the plan that works best for you. So people will be able to say, well, I want a high deductible or I want a low deductible. I want a lower monthly premium, or maybe I'm willing to take a higher monthly premium. And it'll be a lot more easy to compare. The biggest overhaul of healthcare is guaranteeing patients receive care. So every plan in the marketplace provides essential coverage, regardless of your pre-existing condition meaning things like emergency services, Maybe. any hospitalizations, <laughs> maternity and newborn care, prescription drugs, rehab services, and pediatric doctor visits will all be covered by insurance, just to name a few. And some of the good news is that those doctor visits that you have, those co-pays that Nick mentioned, those co-pays now accumulate okay. toward the out-of-pocket maximum, which they currently you know, don't do in today's mm -hmm. world. Uh, For help. small business owners and people who qualify, there are also tax credits available to help reduce premiums and to ease the financial burden. For folks who have a concern that if they lose their job, if they want to be an entrepreneur like Nick and they want to go out on their own, they can get insurance and they know that that insurance is going to cover them when they need that insurance. Let's face it, health insurance, it like filing like taxes, is a confusing topic and it doesn't hurt to shop and ask around. I would recommend that you uh, research as much as you can and just get as educated on the topic as much as you can. And then I always tell people, go to your trusted broker or agent, somebody you know, and they exist in all communities within South Dakota. So there'll be lots of resources to help answer those questions. Working with drills and saws, it's very easy to lose a finger or two. Luckily, Nick's only had a few close calls. Nothing too catastrophic, but yeah, minor ones. But with the coming changes, insurance is the last thing he has to worry about. With your Vera Medical Minute, I'm Jake Iverson, KSFY News. You know, throughout this half hour, we're going to be talking to a lot of specialists about mm -hmm. the Affordable Care Act. We're also going to try to answer some of the questions that you've been asking us on our Facebook page and through email. Deb Muller from Avera Health Plans joins us now. Thank you for being here. First, I think a lot of people think that everyone must go sh sign up for insurance, but that's not the case. So who is really affected by this portion of the plan? Yeah, let's start with some basic statistics here for South Dakota. 80% of the residents of South Dakota currently get their health insurance coverage either through a government program like Medicare, Medicaid, or with the Department of Defense through their TRICARE program. The other group is covered by their employer um, already. So those folks really don't have to worry about these health insurance marketplaces that are now open for open enrollment October 1st with coverage effective on January 1st. You know, the neat thing about this, the good thing is that there's options. The bad thing is that there's options. There are options. Is there a lot of confusion? Are, are, are people confused when they go in this? 
they're confused in actually getting into the website more so than anything else. Yeah. But once they get there, the actual plan selection process itself, because I've talked to people who have been on the website uh -huh. selecting plans, has been pretty easy. In fact, it's the easiest part of the entire experience. They're finding it to be very similar to any other internet shopping experience that you might have, be it to kayak or be it to um, Hotels.com, or if you're me, I shop at Target or Macy's <laughs> online. Sure. But those are the kinds of experiences that people have. their sorting and filtering opportunities available to them to find a plan that actually best fits their needs. Tell us a little bit more about that. What's kind of the biggest thing that comes of whatever their experience may be? You know, the things that I think of their experience is, one, it takes time. So we're telling people to take at least 45 minutes to an hour to go through the entire process on a registration standpoint and to get through the, the actual plan selection process. And the good news is when they actually select, think about what's in the best interest of you or your family when you're out there choosing. Do you want a higher deductible, which translates into a lower monthly premium, sure. or potentially a lower deductible, which will mean a higher higher monthly premium. We want to show you something here. We've got a question from yeah. Facebook. Doris Knudsen wants to know, does the new health care plan only concern people who don't have insurance right now, or does it include people who already have insurance? The way that I answer that is, again, if you're already covered under a health insurance policy through the, your employer, or if you have a health insurance coverage through a government program, you really don't have to worry about the marketplace. The marketplace is intended for the individual purchaser. Mm -hmm. That individual purchaser is somebody who's a sole proprietor, it's somebody who's an independent contractor, maybe it's somebody who graduated from college and for whatever reason aren't on a, their parents' plan anymore. Mm -hmm. Or the other important group that this is for is for those that for whatever reason haven't been able to gain access to health insurance previously because they had a health condition, yeah. an injury, something that prohibited them from getting access to health insurance. These are the focus of, of these health insurance marketplaces. Gotcha. All right. Deb, thanks for answering those questions. We'll see Welcome. you again in a couple minutes. Yeah. And so now that we know more about what's happening, let's talk about how to get signed up. Coming up next, we're going to talk about the marketplace and how it can help you sort through all of those choices. And as we go to break, answer this question. According to the Department of Health and Human Services, how many South Dakotans don't have health insurance? Is it A, 92,441, B, 51,456, C, 23,985, or D, 76,235. Tell us what you think on our Facebook page or on the Avera Health Plans page. We'll have the answer right after the break. Now the answer to the question we asked before the break, how many South Dakotans don't have health insurance? The answer is A, 92,441 South Dakotans. That's according to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. I just think they, they think it's a law, but they don't know where to go to sign up for it. They don't know what effect it has in their life. They don't know if they get a card in the mail. They don't know what it means to them. It's been nine days since the government opened the online marketplace for Americans to purchase health insurance, but it has not been easy. The government says healthcare.gov was designed to handle as many as 60,000 users at once, but as many as 250,000 are trying to access it at a given time. As the government works out the glitches, Nancy Nave shows us what you need to be ready for once you do get online. In the week the marketplace has been operating, it seems the hardest part about it is getting on it. But the bugs are being worked on. Janice Lewis with Avera Health Plans has helped people navigate the marketplace. She says people are surprised how long it takes, which is about an hour. But that's only if you have all the info you need handy. You need things like social security numbers of yourself and everybody in your household. You need income verification from the last filing of your income taxes, including W-2 information for everybody receiving income in your household. And then you need to bring information if you are eligible for any insurance from your employer and that information will all need to be entered into the marketplace. The marketplace in South Dakota is federally facilitated and in Sioux Falls you choose between three carriers Avera, Dakota Care and Sanford. Like any insurance you can choose what amount of deductible you want to have, what amount of co-pays you want to have when you go to the doctor. Um, we here at Avera Health Plans we have 12 different plans available for you on the website when you go out there so it's anywhere from a $250 deductible which is considered a platinum plan to a bronze plan that has a $6,000 deductible. Let me give you an example of one of the 48 8 million Americans who are taking advantage of Marketplace. Janice helped a 45-year-old man who was making minimum wage, so his company didn't offer him insurance and he couldn't afford it. 
he went on the marketplace and qualified for subsidies. So now his $30 copay went to 10 and the government is billed for the rest. So one of the things that we really try to educate people on is we get asked all the time, when do I need to go to the marketplace? How do I know if that's how I need to buy my health insurance? And if you are eligible for any tax credits or subsidies, those are only available on the marketplace. Depending upon what your personal income is, um, you may qualify for those, but you cannot get those by applying with Avera Health Plans directly or any other carrier directly. You do need to go to the marketplace and put in all of your information. The takeaway, make sure you have your tax information from last year at the computer with you. Expect the process to take 60 minutes once you get logged on, and if you know you want on the Avera plan, don't hesitate to call for help. They're waiting to hear from you. Nancy Nape, KSFI News. Now, you do need to enroll before March 31st, or you will face fines. The coverage goes into effect January 1st, so the sooner you enroll, the better. Joining me now is Becky Olson, who is a client services manager with Avera Health Plans. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. First, let's talk about the issues with getting on the site. What's happening and what's being done to fix this problem? Well, as we've talked, the um, site is having some difficulties due to the volume, but we're confident um, that they'll get the bugs worked out. We know that the site is working. We've had applications go through. So although there's a big rush and it's great to have interest in um, checking out your insurance options, they do ha people do have until Janu uh, for January 1st effective dates, they have through December 15th to enroll in that coverage. So just be patient. Okay. Now, does it matter where one person lives, be it South Dakota, Iowa, Minnesota? Yes, it's very important. Your eligibility for the uh, marketplace does depend on where you reside. So if you're a Minnesota resident, you need to apply through Minnesota's and likewise for South Dakota or Iowa. Okay, let's take a question from one of our viewers. Melissa Peterson wrote on Facebook, why are there different levels? Are the cheaper plans going to cover all of our medical needs? The different levels are really put into place to help consumers compare plans. So there's four levels, the metal plans, there's bronze, silver, gold, and platinum, and that gives the consumer kind of a general sense of how much coverage they're going to get for that. Um, that plan. And in terms of giving coverage, uh, does it cover all the services? It does cover the services. It's just with a bronze plan, there may be higher out of pocket costs because the premium is lower. So it gives the consumer some choices. Okay. So if you make a decision, is that decision final then? No, you have the ability to make changes. You can uh, have terminations or cancellations. And um, if you have uh, situations where you want to add dependents and you qualify, you've had a baby or something, those are also allowed as well. What about this? Will you have to do this every year? Yes, you will need to do that. And I think a key thing to remind people of is if their income does change throughout the year, it's a really good idea to go back to healthcare.gov and um, enter that information so that you're, uh, if you have qualified for any subsidies, that information will get adjusted so you don't end up with a tax issue in the end. Makes sense. Okay, thank you, Becky. You have been a wealth of information. And if this still sounds like a lot to take in, do not lose sleep. There is help. Next, we'll talk to two men working to help others get insured. And as we go to break, here's another question. When was the Affordable Care Act signed into law? A, 2000, B, 2005, C, 2010, or D, 2012? Tell us what you think on our Facebook page or the Avera Health Plans page. We'll have the answer right after the break. Now the answer to our question, when was the Affordable Care Act signed into law? The answer is C. The president signed the act into law on March 23, 2010. It represents the most significant regulatory overhaul of the country's health care system since the passage of Medicare. And the Supreme Court also upheld the constitutionality of most of the ACA back in 2012. Okay, we just showed you what you should have ready before you go online, but what if you still need some help once you get there? That's where people like our next two guests come into play. Andy Carlson is a licensed broker with Mutual Medical Insurance in Sioux Falls. Randy Moses is coordinating a Vera McKinnon Certified Application Counselor Program. Glad to have you both with us tonight. Thank you for coming in. Why don't uh, we begin here, guys, by having you explain your role as you help people navigate this system. What do you do? Absolutely. We're uh, consultants to our clients. Uh, we work in the best interest of our clients, trying to help pick the most affordable and best uh, plan for each individual person that comes in. And each, in, each individual is different, so it's, uh, it's just a definitely consultant base where we're trying to find the right plan for the right person. Are you finding that there are a lot of people out there 
who are looking for this help? Because sometimes people are a little shy. They feel like they want to do it themselves. They maybe don't want to ask for help. Absolutely. I mean, uh, we've worked with our clients for many years, so they they trust us and they really value our opinion. So uh, it's definitely something that we are working with each, each person trying to uh, find the best plan for them. Is that easy to do, Randy, to, to work with these folks? Well, we're working with them in a little bit different capacity, not as an insurance agent. We have a what's called a certified application counselor program, uh -huh. which is designed more as a unbiased, neutral source of information for uh, consumers uh, that were there just to provide that information as opposed to making sales and, and having a client base that, like an insurance agent does. When they come to you with questions, guys, are they all over the place or is there one specific area of concern that they're saying, I need this explained to me or I need help with this? It, it's really all over the place. I mean, as, as everybody realizes, it's a very complicated bill. So there's a lot of misinformation out there and a lot of questions. So it's just trying to explain it in the easiest way possible for, for our clients and help them understand and make the best decision possible. And when you see those common concerns come in, I, I mean, realizing we're only about eight or nine days in, but are there common threads that, that people are bringing to you that you can answer rather quickly? Well, maybe I'll just give one example. Uh, seniors have been contacting us uh, and their questions about getting coverage. And the marketplace is not designed for that. Uh, they do not sell uh, Medicare supplements or, or uh, Medicare type products. So we're advising them of that so that they need, you know, recognize they just need to go on to their traditional market that they always have been. Sure, let's try to take a quick uh, question from Facebook here. Laura Johnson wants to know, I have heard that even if we have insurance through our employers that we still have to go to the website and give them all of our information and possibly even provide some proof. Is that true? Uh, no, that's that's not true. Uh, uh, if you do not, are you, let's say you already have health insurance yeah. uh, through your employer, you do not have to go through the exchange and provide any information. Uh, you can keep the coverage you have and, and, uh, and not bother. Okay, all right. Andy and Randy, the Andy and Randy Show, as we said, when you guys walked in the studio. Nice to have you with us, and thanks so much for coming in Thank tonight. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate we appreciate it. it. You bet. You bet. All right, as we go to break, we're going to talk about this. You know, there are a lot of stories out there about health care reform. Not all of them correct. Still ahead, we'll sort out what's fact and fiction. First, though, one more question. What is the official name of the health care law? A, Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. B, American Insurance Overhaul Act. C, Obamacare. D, Universal Health Care Reform Act. Tell us what you think on our Facebook page or the Avera Health Plan page, and we'll have the answer right after the break. Our question before the break, what is the official name of the health care law? The answer is A, Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. Allowing um, people to stay on their parents' insurance until they're 26. And it means you, people cannot be denied insurance because of pre-existing conditions. And it's, make, it's trying to make it so that everyone can have health insurance that they can afford. You know, with something as big mm -hmm. as health care, there are bound to be a ton of questions. And some of those answers may not be the correct ones. Courtney Collins sorts out some of the confusion. If you don't have health insurance, you'll have to get it or face fines. As we've mentioned, your first stop is the health insurance marketplace or exchange. Think of it as a health insurance mall for your state where each store represents a different insurance company. You'll get an easy to read map or menu of options to help you navigate which plan makes the most sense for you or your family. If you are one of the three in five Americans who will be insured by your employer in 2014, you can continue to be insured by your company, although some insurance plans included under their coverage are changing. You also have the option of going to the marketplace to see if you can get a better deal. Since most employers pay a portion of your premium, a better deal is unlikely, but it's still worth taking a look. And if you completely ignore the Affordable Care Act and don't purchase health insurance, you'll still have to pay. For the first year of non-enrollment, you'll face a fee of up to $95 per adult and $47.50 per child, up to $285 per family or 1% of your income, whichever is greater. And that penalty increases every year. Courtney Collin, KSFI News. Obviously, there is a lot to keep track of. Oh, yeah. Joining us to sort out the truth from the myths is Deb Muller from Avera Health Plans. Also, Lonnie McKittrick. He is the health department manager at Fisher Rounds and Associates. Deb, let's talk about those penalties. Give us a little bit more information. 
Well, as, the, as it's stated, um, there is a penalty if you don't carry insurance, but most individuals will actually meet the threshold of carrying health insurance because they have Medicare, they have Medicaid, they have employer health insurance. But if you do not carry health insurance during the course of 2014, there is a fine or a tax or a penalty. It's all used, interchangeably used words. That penalty in 2014, which would be payable in your 2015 taxes, would be $95 per adult in your household and $47.50 for each child within your household, capping at $285 or 1% of your household income for that year, whichever is greater, and then it'll increase year after year. But as my mother always told me, the consequences aren't necessarily in paying um, fees or taxes. It's about what happens if you aren't covered when you need that coverage. Okay, Lonnie, what about premium prices? Many reports out there say they will increase due to the health care law. Is that fact or fic fiction? Uh, I'm going to have to go in the middle over there because there's, <laughs> <laughs> because there's new calculations to figure out how the rates are going to be uh, formulated for folks. So um, one being you, you can't uh, uh, discriminate rating according to gender. So uh, typically the males, when they reach age 19, were down here and females were up here. Yeah. Uh, so they can no longer do that. Uh, the big factor is the, uh, that we had a five to one age banding and now it is being shrunk down to three to one. But simply means that somebody, use somebody 21 years old versus somebody 60, the rate could be five times higher at 60 versus the 21 year old. That's being shrunk down to three to one, so it can only be that, that three times difference. So what we're seeing is the older folks, or mature folks, I should say, <laughs> are actually going to receive some premium reductions. And the ones that may have, uh, have, may have had some adverse health selection that was yeah. in there, those folks may see some reductions or will see some significant reductions. On the opposite side over there, you're going to see some of the young folks that are going to see some significant premium increases. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what is going to be. So when you say fact or fiction, it's kind of in between. You're going to see some losers and winners in this uh, in this whole game. And one of the other pieces too that we make mention of is when you're purchasing on the health insurance marketplace, depending upon your income, you may be eligible for a tax credit. And that tax credit is actually going to reduce the amount of your monthly premium. So yeah. you might see an overall increase in the premium, but it might be offside if you're eligible for one of those tax credits. Okay. Lonnie and Deb, thanks for coming back and talking with us. We appreciate it. And we'll be back right after this. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, how many Americans didn't have health insurance in 2011? Was it A, 20.1 million, B, 81.5 million, C, 36.2 million, or D, 48.6 million? The answer, D, 48.6 million Americans. Before we go, we want to provide you with some websites and phone numbers that can help you in your search for health care. First, of course, is healthcare.gov. This is the government's website to help you navigate the entire system. If you have questions, you can also call 1 800 318 2596. Locally, you can get answers to your questions at Inner Lakes Community Action in Madison. That number is 1 800 896 4103. Want to let you know as well that Avera Health Plans has people available to help answer your questions. Go to AveraHealthPlans.com or call 1 855 692 8372. They will help you find the best plan for you, even if it is not with Avera. Whatever your opinion of the Affordable Health Care Act, it is the law. And we sure hope that this half hour helped you understand what is expected of you before January. Thank you for joining us tonight. Have a good night.